Pop Up Flamby's Life and Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he, he, a. Woodworkers, welcome back to another video. No, no, wrong introduction. You're not woodworkers, you're mathematicians, at least I suppose so. But speaking of woodworking, have you checked out my woodworking channel, Flemish Wood, already? A lot of new content being uploaded over there. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. Also, the advent calendar is going on at the moment. A lot of great deals going on over on stemage.com, stemage.eu, and also my personal spring shop. So definitely make sure to also check these out. Links down there in the description. So recently I was um, running around with my dogs at night. No, no, I'm not running around. I'm a lazy piece of shit. I was just taking a regular walk in the evening. And then I was thinking about a um, bunch of things. So when I'm not thinking about working my wood at night, I think about math mathematics in normal case. And one of the things I was thinking about was one of my most favorite little mathematics facts. Namely, if we take a look at the tension, for example, okay, um, tension of x, we all know that this is nothing other than the sine x over the cosine x. Okay, that's far as good. And the cool thing about the tension of x is that it's an odd function, meaning if we were to plug in a negative argument, it's going to be equal to negative the tension of x. Why is this the case? Well, plugging a negative argument into here gives us sine of negative x over cosine negative x. Sine is an odd function, meaning sine of negative x is negative sine of x, and the cosine is an even function, meaning the cosine of negative x is the cosine of x. Meaning overall, this gives us the tension of negative, uh, the tension of x, but with a negative sign in front. Okay, this right here is an odd function, and what I always found rather curious, I have used this a lot before in integration, de deriving identities and the like, is that the inverse function of the tension is also an odd function. Namely, we have that for the inverse tangent of negative x, this is the same as negative the arcus tangent of x. I always found this rather curious and I thought this was a real curiosity. I didn't think much of it. But then uh, when I was walking around, I was thinking, is this in general that, that way so that we have um, that the inverse of an odd function is also an odd function. I was thinking about it and a few um, basically um, sketches of a proof came to my mind. So at first let us suppose that we have an odd function f. Okay, um, let f be odd. Or in other words we are going to say that f of negative x is the same as negative f of x. And also we need, we need to have an inverse, okay? So an inverse is defined if one does exist as being, um, if we take the left inverse um, of the function of x, um, this is equal to the right inverse um, operation basically on the function. So f of f of negative one um, of x, this is going to give us x, the identity. This is how inverse functions are defined. And we're going to make use of these properties to kind of prove the statement that the inverse of an odd function is also an odd function. And we're going to start off with this fact of the inverse that we got right here, but just plug in a negative x into here. Let's go with the left inverse um, at first. So case one, we are going to take a look at um, f to the negative one of f of negative x. Okay, so on the one hand what we know is that f is an odd function, meaning we can bring the negative sign to the front here inside of the argument. So this is the inverse function of negative f of x. But what we also know is that um, the inverse function or the function applied to the inverse function is the same as the argument in and of itself, so negative x. But one other cool thing that we know about um, inverse functions is that if we apply the function to the inverse function of x, this is the same as our x that we got right here. So let's rewrite the x as being negative f inverse of f of x. And this right here shows that indeed our inverse is going to be, so the left inverse in our case is going to be an odd function already. Just take a look at, at that because we got basically the situation here, the inverse of negative y is the same as, oh, what did we have right here? Negative f inverse of y. Okay, so this holds for the left inverse, does the same thing hold for the right inverse. So this is case number two. This is what just swarmed through my mind. So now for the right inverse, we are going to go the same route. So f of f inverse of neg negative x is, so we know, um, we, we don't know anything about the inverse function at the moment, apart from the fact that we are going to spit out our argument when being applied to our function in of itself as right inverse. So this is going to give us um, just negative x. 
but we know what x is. As mentioned before, x is nothing other than f inverse uh, um, f and then of f inverse of x, okay, by using this property once again or the starting point basically. So negative f of f inverse of x. And cool thing is we know that f is an odd function, meaning we can drag the negative sign into here, giving us overall that f of negative f inverse of x is the same as f of f inverse of negative x. Meaning what we got right here as a situation, if we were to apply the left inverse to both sides, once again, is that f inverse of negative x is the same as applying the inverse function here, negative f inverse of x. Meaning overall, it's the left and the right inverse. Both of these are going to be odd overall, meaning our inverse in and of itself is also going to be an odd function. And this is the general case, this does work out and I think this right here should also work as a proof, correct me if I'm wrong. But it is indeed the case. Um, once I came back, um, I went to Mastec Exchange and indeed um, the inverse of every odd function, as long as the inverse does exist, and I think for odd functions that's always the case, it's going to be an odd function too. And I was thinking about this a tiny little bit more and I was just take a, taking a look at the graph um, of an odd function. So if we take a look at an odd function, okay, so for example let's take a look um, at our boy x to the third power. How can we define ourselves in inverse geometrically? Well, we are going to think of the identity function being in here. Okay, so this right here is the identity function. This is just x. And then what we are going to do is we are going to flip our graph on our identity, giving us overall an inverse function. Okay, this right here is our identity. And now we are just going to flip our graph on the identity, giving us overall this thing right here. Okay, geometrically speaking, it's going to be an odd function once again. Odd meaning that if we take the negative input in here, so if we have, um, for example, this right here gives us um, 2, okay, then if we take a look at negative 2, this is just going to be basically the same y value just with a negative sign in front. And the same situation is going to hold here once again, considering 2 and negative 2. And yeah, geometrically speaking, it's totally obviously uh, obvious that the inverse function of an odd function is always an odd function. But I thought that it was um, rather curious because um, I never thought much of it. And then the next thing came to my mind. What about even functions? Is the inverse of an even function an even function always? Is this always the case? And this is the really interesting part of the video, to be honest. Um, at first, let us think about the inverse of an even function. Okay. Um, let us take, for example, x squared okay, as an even function. This right here is going to be our boy x squared. Now, as mentioned before, what we can do is we can put the identity into here and just flip our graph on our identity, giving us overall as the inverse of our x squared, the sideways parabola. Um, this is where I got the original idea from, by the way, from the last video with the circle embedded inside of the parabola. Um, as mentioned before, I played around with Desmos a tiny little bit. And then I was thinking, am I being fucking stupid here? There doesn't exist an inverse for an even function. There just doesn't exist one. I mean, you can see clearly that there, do, uh, that there does exist one, kinda, but this right here are two branches of two different functions. Namely, on the one hand we have the square root of x and down here we have the negative branch, negative square root of x. This is not a function in and of itself. Why? Well, because this thing doesn't pass the horizontal line test in our case. Horizontal line test just means that um, for one y value we have two different x values, meaning there doesn't exist in inverse. This is something that you learn in, in calculus high school or something. I don't care. But yeah, it, it just doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Hence, there doesn't exist in inverse for an even function. Meaning, probably, I was thinking about that a bit more, that in a second, no inverses of even functions are even even functions, okay? Because this just doesn't exist. But um, at first, let us go into the mathematics of the horizontal line test a little bit more, or why um, inverse functions don't exist for even functions um, regularly. So for, for a function to have an inverse, we need two conditions to hold. On the one hand, our function must be injective, and on the other hand, our function must be um, uh, su surjective. 
If both hold, they are bijective and an inverse does exist. So for functions, for example, x cubed. Now, um, at first, um, what we are going to do is we are going to define what an even function even is. So I said it before on the cosine, if we take um, an even function f of negative x, this is going to give us um, f of x once again. This is what it means for a function to be even. Geometrically speaking, if we take the negative value, okay, for example, this right here is 2, and this right here is negative 2, it's going to spit us out the same y value, hence the horizontal line test. I mentioned this before. Now, let us take a look at the injectivity of our um, even function, a random arbitrary one. Injectivity means that if we take um, two values x and y out of our domain, then it must hold that if we compare f of x to f of y, that this does imply that x is equal to y. For example, this obviously holds on x cubed. Okay, no matter which um, values of um, y you basically com compare, so f of x, you're always going to end up with just one mapping from, um, from our x to y. But does this also hold for our even functions? Well, it doesn't. It's absolutely trivial in our case. Let us just take two random arbitrary values out of the domain. For example, x and its conjugate, negative x. Now, um, what about f of ne negative x being equal to f of x? Obviously, this does hold for an even function. But now we have to think. This obviously does not imply that x is equal to negative x. There's only one number for which this does hold, namely for the number 0. But for all other numbers out of the domain, this doesn't hold. And since it doesn't hold in general, well, it can be a bijection since it's not even injective in the first place. This is why no um, inverses of even functions do exist in the first place. Okay, um, or geometrically speaking, using the horizontal line test. Now, I was telling you guys before that there do exist no inverses of even functions. Meaning, let's define a set. Okay, um, inverses of even functions, i.e., um, is equal to the empty set. Meaning, there are no elements in the set of inverses of even functions. But then something came to my mind. Do you know? The inverse function of every even function is an even function. But why is it the case? It's, it's so nice because it's vacuously true. We are going to suppose that our um, that all of our inverses of even functions are indeed even functions. Then, since we don't have any even function in our inverses of even functions or no functions at all in our set, well, this does mean that indeed all of our functions in here, since we don't have any, are even functions. They are also all odd functions in here. They are also part of the family. All of the inverses of even functions, which are in, in here, since there are none, do fulfill any mathematical property that we would like. All of these in here are injective. All of these are bijective. All of these are surjective. All of these are a homomorphism. Maybe, we don't know. Maybe all of them are drunk or have fucked your mom. I have no, uh, I have no idea. But here, yeah, overall, the inverse of every even function is an even function. Same with the odd functions. The inverse of every odd function is an odd function. And this was a little curiosity I wanted to share with you guys. A um, little talky video with a tiny little bit of theory today. But I thought it might be interesting to bunch you guys. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, why not make sure to subscribe to the channel or something. Um, or maybe just um, suck these nuts. I don't know what you want to do today. But yeah, this is it from me today. And as mentioned before, Edwin Calendar, Edwin Calendar, check out everything. My Teespring shop, etc. Also Flemmy's Wood and see me working my wood over there. And yeah, up until next video, actually, guys, a flamble day. And please stay safe. Ciao. And now I'm going to stare awkwardly at the camera for a few more seconds. Yeah.